Good day to you, Texam followers. Welcome to this yet another podcast that we bring into you. I am your host, William Chu. Joining me today is Sol Kabweza hey. and Nigel Gambanga. Hi, guys. Gentlemen, uh, just come out of a, a holiday, Heroes and Defense holiday. Um, had a great time. I'm sure you did too. Rallying for the troops, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we're back here um, talking about what has been happening on texam.co.zw. A few issues made it topical last week. Interesting topics um, that we are going to discuss today. Uh, one of our very own um, startup founders, uh, Takunda Chingonzo. Chingonzo. Uh, managed to pin down. I, I'm not too sure no, whether, 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 whether he had a three three count, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or did the ref call for something else. But managed to pin down Obama. Um, Look, I don't think it's pinning down. We'll get the down. We'll, we'll get down yeah. to it. Who's, uh, who's the politicians? Name and shame. Um, <laughs> well, well yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for being special. Owned by yours truly. Yes, the people. Yes. <laughs> What did the Herald say? So what was so inaccurate? Yeah, I tried to spin it. Um, the yes must he tried to spin it. Everyone has been trying to spin it. I think it was like an uncomfortable moment for everyone. <laughs> for the young man, I think it was, well, you know, I have an opportunity to ask, so he just asked. He didn't know what he was... Are um, you sure he didn't have this burning desire to find out why the US government is putting us in an uncomfortable out. position? He just didn't know he was walking into a... Are you sure about that? I don't think well, so. Well, we're going to have Takunda here for one of our video casts and then he yes. can explain himself. Yes. But sure. Yes. Sure. Point to discuss. Uh, what does this mean for Zimbabwean startups? Do you think it was more politicking? Um, do you think anything came out of it? Great that somebody could seek audience. I mean, the Yali team did go. They were addressed by President Obama and quite a few others. But... This is now an interview at the, was it U.S. slash Africa Summit? Yes. Um, just before the summit. This where the U.S. says, wow, you know, we need to get into Africa. We need to get into Africa. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, they've, they've, actually, noticed, they've noticed what China has been doing. Yeah, yeah. They and have, have taken note that... I mean, while, while the U.S. is happy on and on about, uh, you need to do this before we can do that, and, and then, you know, withholding... Um, the, 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 the US and the West in general withholding aid, like in the case of Malawi, where they say, well, you know what, you're not, um, you're not um, friendly Ex to you know, these human rights things. I mean, human rights are important, but using that as we we'll withhold aid, we will not work with you on that and stuff. And China essentially saying, you know what, you're a sovereign country, do your thing, um, we'll advise you and there, do your thing, but where we work together, we work together. Yeah. 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 So do you see anything fruitful coming out of this? Not really, no. I actually didn't think that the argument that he was raising, in as much as everyone made noise about it, I didn't think it was relevant to our ecosystem directly. Fair enough, people are going to hammer me with the 5,000 points on why the sanctions are hurting us, but I think our ecosystem has got other things to focus on rather than the broader perspective of sanctions on startups. I think... Dude, I think you're totally right. I think what's what he he essentially did was highlight the Zimbabwean start or the Zimbabwean startup ecosystem. So in the end, this is not about sanctions at all. Sure. Um, immediately, it's about his startup. So there's more visibility. There's more. Ah, what is that young man doing? What is that brilliant young man doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, but only a few people can sit with the the most powerful president um, on the earth and be all settled and be all... But, but, but my, question is, my, que my so question is... My question is... definitely going to get a lot of attention. Okay, one last point before we wrap this up. My yeah. question is, um, Takunda and the Sai Sai team are going to demo Africa. They're the startup representing Zim, one of the top 40. Yeah, and sure. You, that interview, the bomb. Yes, and you know that Demo Africa is, is not a competition. It's about getting investment, securing deals, that sort of thing. Do you think that the sanctions that he was talking about when he had the one-on-one -on -one with Obama are going to put him in an uncomfortable position and some investors are going to be like, nah, we don't want to put money into Sai Sai even though it's a brilliant... A startup idea because you guys have sanctions or you think that's a totally irrelevant discussion they'll say you know what we'll back you we'll give you the half a million that you want I'm, 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 I'm not too sure whether it will bring negative publicity to him um, because obviously Obama did counter and say hey you know what 
definitely some people are interpreting wrongly this is targeted sanctions and stuff like that yada yada uh, so i do think and feel personal assumption it may not bring as much negativity to it as is being played out but definitely adds another feather to his cap I'm yeah, really I'm I'm sure, I'm, I'm so proud. I'm sure, yeah, so proud that's, that's yeah. quite a bit for them. Yeah, he did. He awesome did. Um, Xiaomi, um, the apple of China, so to say. Uh, <laughs> Dude, they're not their own. <laughs> that's, that's what they've been called online. In the phone, they've been called Mr. Jobs. Apparently, also, where is it? And just so, Chinese New Balances. <laughs> so they do quite a bit uh, replicating. Apple, uh, even in their images, their online marketing, how they go out yeah, about it stuff like that. Dudes. Coincidence, albeit that when they've zoomed into some of their images, they have seen Apple Electronics, manufactured by Apple Electronics <laughs> California. So they actually use it. They I use the Sounds iPhone like some images. logo manufacturer we know who used to do something like that, but that's another Cool, thing. cool. But doing well to the extent that um, they are now the highest selling brand in China, in China yeah. um, overtaken Samsung, Samsung that originally comes from South Korea. South Korea, yes. South Korea. I think the key thing there is that, you know, being number one in the market is good, but this market actually happens to be the world's biggest smartphone market. So sure. um, Samsung is bigger globally, globally, but they've just lost their key position in the world's biggest market, which is also uh, an emerging country. So the rise in smartphone usage is ballooning. And this startup just happens to get hold of that, um, of that market. Sure. I mean, it says a lot, I think, most importantly about if you're a local product and you're relevant to the people in that country, you're going to win. But how do you, mm. think, um, how do you think they're going to fare uh, in a market where Huawei, that's their home market as well, is saying, you know what, we're going to be focusing on higher end models now. The whole news, uh, the, the whole news release or press release from Huawei that two days ago, 80% of all the devices we're going to be churning out are going to be better, smarter in devices, and we're focusing on China definitely. Um, how do you think these guys are going to fare against Huawei, which is well, like a huge force on its own? From what I have heard, um, haven't done much research on it, but yeah. I'm made to believe the marketing strategy that Xiaomi used was where they would put out on social media what would you like in a device people would respond they would go and build a prototype to the exact specifications of what people said they would like in a device yeah. answering what people want and produce that exact same device and then say here you go here's the device that you were looking for yeah. Can uh, they do a video of some Apple Demand creation. Can they do that for local device. pizza? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> think about it. Eh? But, cool, I think but it, it was a brilliant strategy. But to, to answer your question, um, I think Huawei is a lot of things. Um, they are they, they're into base stations. They are into enterprise solutions. They are into sure. um, all these things, um, backend infrastructure and stuff for, for mobile telecoms. So Xiaomi is one thing, making brilliant devices. Great devices, just like Apple does. So that focus, I think, eventually makes them the winner. Mm. Okay. Mm. But I don't know what's yeah. going to be the effect of OnePlus One. OnePlus One, yeah, they had a little boo boo um, yesterday, or was it the day before, with a sexist competition. Uh, got a lot of negative ah, publicity yes. over it. Uh, would be interesting it's to okay follow. In China. It's not okay in the world. <laughs> they didn't realize. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> would, would be interesting to know whether anybody locally is using uh, the Xiaomi. Well, a, a Xiaomi. Uh, if so, how does it pan out? I'm made to believe the user interface is Chinese. I'm not too sure if they have an English version. Um, but we'll pursue it and find out. Uh, Ikenet had an AGM recently um, saying, you know what, we've realized that this is more than just about uh, price wars. You know, we're going to go for product quality. We're going to go for quality over pricing. Your thoughts? Uh, I think it makes sense. These guys are the only listed telecoms company, number one. So they have, they have an obligation to their shareholders. They can't just be shredding 
um, the price value that they put to the products just because they want to rope in an extra 300,000 subscribers. At the end of the day, they need to boost the earning value per share. And one of the best ways to do that is to maintain the solid, decent price and push out a better value for that same product, which is what they want to do now. They're saying, you know what, forget about this whole, we'll give you um, 16 minutes on $1 thing. We're going to give you the best 10 minutes on the $1. Well, 35. Yeah. 35 for Whoever me. wants to do that. Sure. And they're saying, that's not our baby anymore. We yeah. want to focus on a better service and we want to give out... Um, a wider array of you know products and services in the same respect so your thoughts do you think that arpu average revenue per user is affected by the decrease in in prices in the price wars that have I been taking place it's affected so um and you know on one hand they they, they need to um, produce some results for the investors so a decrease in, in arpu is obviously a negative um so i don't, i think they, they have also realized over time that look, um, we have a superior network. We have higher capacity. Sure. We have more products that people likely want to stick around for, yeah. like the phenomenon of success, which is ego cash. So much that no matter how aggressive these other guys get with their price wars, we are likely not going to lose our subscribers. Our subscribers are probably going to buy an additional SIM card only to use a certain uh, promo until it lasts. Sure. But they'll sure. always come but, back to Econet as their main network. But the argument then would be, if the prices are not reduced, would people not use the service more? If it was cheaper, would I not subscribe to it more? The issues of network capacity. So <laughs> if, you, if, you, if we're going to reduce prices to the, to the point where you know, broadband is essentially um, almost free or so affordable that everyone can get online, that's going to put a stress on the network and that's going to mean more frustrated subscribers. So they have that in mind and they're thinking, well, we'd rather have um, just enough subscribers that are happy and continue to spend than have more subscribers that are frustrated at disconnecting all the time and might not look forward to the experience of using the product. Sure. I think it's sure. all a numbers game, really. I mean, in addition to what um, Doug Douglas Mboweni mentioned at the AGM, they secured $150 million like four or five days after that. Or well, it was in the news then. Right. And the funds are earmarked for, you know, bolstering whatever delivery they have, particularly for EcoCash, number one. Yeah. And then other services like Econet Solar. So mm -hmm. they're not focused on, you know, anything that goes outside the, we know we're already number one. Let's improve that. It has to be, you know, yeah. something that, that, that improves whatever they already have right now and makes it a better service, which is what I want as a customer because, let's face it, I know I'm not going to get a really great deal in terms of price from Econet and the rest of the guys. Mm. Well, followers would be interested to know, would you spend more based on quality or based on pricing? If the prices were reduced, would you use the service more or would you say it's based on quality? Our last topic, gentlemen, pay now. Um, the local payment integration solution uh, has seen it fit to have a developer's conference um, of sorts. Yeah, well, developer day, developer workshop, really. Uh, get the developers to help the developers use the platform. So, sure. Yeah, explain the platform to a room full of developers and help them along in terms of integrating whether it's their apps, web, mobile, or whether it's just a backend, backend um, system uh, right. for invoicing or whatever. PayNow is a brilliant product. I think this is a brilliant opportunity for startups to you know, um, get up to speed, understand how the API works and yeah. integrate it immediately. Yeah. Nigel, would you think that the target should be startups as opposed to your brick and mortar businesses um, trying to migrate them to e-commerce, m-commerce online? I think um, PayNow is still in its uh, you know, fledgling state. So they want to get people who are already um, knee deep in development, who are already trying to push e-commerce or who have been facing the same boundaries they've been trying to fix. Sure. So this is a good shot in the arm for local e-commerce. These are guys, remember they've invited people who have solutions who want to integrate or people who are thinking about building solutions. They've already been developers before. They've probably done one or two, three e-commerce sites and yep. they know that, you know, I have to use these three or four workarounds. Then they say to these guys, you know what? 
you're always developing e-commerce uh, platforms. You're always right. trying to integrate payments. This is how you do it. When someone else comes to you, say Nigel or Elizabeth, and they want an e-commerce site, you're going to do it for them. And Correct. once more people get sucked into it or appreciate the value that mm-hmm. PayNow is offering, mm-hmm. then the brick and mortar businesses are going to say, you know what, let's jump into e-commerce because mm-hmm. there's a dead simple option that's available and PayNow has it for 500 startups or developers. Wow. Plus, uh, yeah. just a quick one there. I think they actually are going to have a separate launch event for uh, your brick and mortar businesses in terms of how you integrate your business, but they want to make sure there's, there's a pool of a pool of developers that are ready to support these businesses. Yeah, and I understand. Yeah. Well, followers would be interested to know from you. Uh, will you be attending the Pay Now Developers Day? Uh, does it add value to what you are doing? Uh, how best they can pivot from that? And I'm sad to say, uh, gentlemen, that's a wrap from me this week. Uh, it's been good. It's been great from myself and the crew behind the scenes. It's a good day. Cheers, guys. Thank you.